Here's how to use NetFab Basic to repair a part um, from the Reconstruct Me program. So once you've um, scanned in somebody's face with uh, the Kinect using Reconstruct Me, this is a program you can use to um, fill in the holes and get it rotated and scaled um, so that it's ready to print. Um, so this is NetFab Basic. This is the free version. Um, so it's nagging us about upgrading. So we don't have a few professional features, but it does everything we need it to do. Um, so uh, we're only going to use a few tools today. The first one of which is, of course, open. So you can right-click on the background to add part. There's the open key up here. There's the part menu. There's, you know, always different ways to do the same thing. But you can right-click and add part, and we'll open our STL. So make sure you have an STL um, exported from Reconstruct Me, um, and then this program will open it up right away. So we can open our, let's, see, let's work on Patrick right now. So it converts it. Um, this takes just a moment. Um, it's our big files, so relevant to uh, our Fab Lab. If everyone is opening their file at once off a network drive, that takes forever. You should figure out, have everybody um, get their files stored locally before they try to open it. It'll go a lot quicker. Um, okay, so it gives us uh, a 3D view of our STL. It gives us a nice exclamation mark so, so that we know that there's holes in it. Um, sometimes you get a really clean scan, but often um, you'll get like holes under their chin. Um, oftentimes, oh, so you can use your, your right click to drag around. Um, right click and drag to orbit your model. Um, but this is just rotating our perspective. This isn't rotating the model. If uh, we have these options up here, so look at the front of the model, and this is like the front as far as the computer is concerned, um, and that's what we want to change. Because right now, if we like sent this SDL to the printer, it would print on its back. So the first thing we can do is get this uh, model, this head, sitting upright. Um, uh, so you can hit um, Control R, Command R. Um, you can also right click on the back, uh, or I'm sorry, right click on the part itself and hit Rotate. And um, for the files that Reconstruct Me gives you, um, you can just have everybody follow along with the same thing and rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees um, and hit rotate. And it'll be facing towards you now. So this is great. So it, he's facing us. Um, but I think for finger puppets, if you want to print out a finger puppet, um, you want to make sure that his um, chin is, is tilted back a bit. So we're going to rotate it a little bit more. Um, so from the side, ah. so from the side, um, we're looking straight onto the x-axis. Um, and if I want to spin him around this way, I can rotate the x-axis. Um, let's keep the window open, try a few different times. If we rotate it by 15 degrees, oh, that tilts him the wrong way, so let's go negative 30. Uh, and this is, I'm just going to try to get a, a nice, clean, cut line right across here. So that looks pretty good to me. I'll close this window. So um, to cut this file into two models, so we're just going to print the head. We're not going to worry about the shoulders. Um, we can use the cuts toolbar over here. Um, it's as simple as dragging this Z slider. So we have this nice line that shows us where the program is going to slice this into. Um, so I mean, it's kind of a carb. We are slicing things, after all. So we can move this until we got it um, right across their neck. Um, that's going to be the bottom of the file that we print. We can execute and cut. It gives us a preview of where it's going to cut. And we say, that looks pretty good. Um, and we say, cut. And that just puts it in two parts. So we have the top and the bottom. So we can right click on the bottom to remove. We say, yes, we want to remove that cut, yes. So now we just have the head, uh, but it still has got some holes in it. So we're going to, and we, and we say to the kids, you know, what do you do if you get a hole in your head? Hopefully you go to the hospital. So we have a, a hospital um, symbol up here to repair. So we hit repair, and this is all automatic, so this is really great. So it shows us the holes that it can repair. Um, you just hit automatic repair down here. You hit um, default repair is good, just hit execute. And it'll think for just a second and fill those in. Uh, it does a pretty nice job in general. Um, so our holes are all filled in. So we can apply the repair, and that asks, uh, do you want to remove the old part? We say yes, we want to get rid of the part with holes in it, and we are left with just a single part with all the holes filled in. Um, so now that this is 
this is still a life-size head. Uh, so to print a finger puppet, uh, the last thing we're going to do is scale it. Um, so you can right-click and scale. Um, you can also, I think it's like Control S or Command S. Uh, I'll try that. Command S. Um, sometimes this comes up like showing all these extra um, numbers, current position, current size, uh, and that can be kind of overwhelming, but we only have to change one number. We're just changing this from a, a scale factor of 1 to uh, maybe a scale factor of 0.125. So that's going to give us a 1 8 scale model. Uh, make sure that the scaling ratio is checked so it changes x, y, and z all at once. You can hit scale. It gives us a much smaller head. Um, this will print out way faster than a full-size head, obviously. Um, so scaling is really important. Uh, at, so at this point, this can go directly to um, our slicer, and that'll be the next video. So once you've scaled it, you hit right-click and export as STL. Um, so find a place to save it, hit save. Um, it'll come up with one more window. Um, it's either optimized, I think on Windows, it's like fix or something, but just click the biggest button on the screen until it gives you a check mark, and then you can hit export. And we're done.